brothers and sisters in Christ, let us uh, prepare our hearts uh, to come before the Lord.
brothers and sisters, we've come together as a family of God in our Father's presence to offer Him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive His holy word, to bring before Him the needs of the world, to ask His, for his forgiveness of our sins, and to seek His grace that through His Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves to His service. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. At this time, let us take a moment to ask the Holy Spirit uh, to search our hearts. Together, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow man in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in the newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you with all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As a people forgiven, let us rise. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let us worship the Lord. All praise to his name. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us remain standing for a time of praise. Good afternoon. In Psalm 27, verse 8, it says that You have said, seek my face. And my heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I seek. And the Heavenly Father, we just come before you this day. Lord, we, every day you ask us to seek your face. And Lord, that today that we want to respond, not just today, but every single day, Lord. Lord, we come here in your presence, we ask that Lord, you just show your face to us, Lord. Lord, we know that you love us and that we want to fall in love with you again and again. Yes. So I pray that as we just have this time of worship, Lord, Lord, speak to us. Reveal yourself to us that we may know you and fall in love with you all over again. Yes, Lord. So I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. the more I seek you. The more I seek you The more I find you The more I find you sit at your feet drink from the cup in your hands lay back against you and breathe feel your heart beat this love is so deep it's more than I can stand and I melt in your peace it's overwhelming
Drink from the cup in your hands. Lay back against you and breathe. Feel your heart beat. Oh, deep, it's more than I can stand. Out in your peace. Tell me. seated. Let us pray the collect together. The collect today is the 15th Sunday after Trinity. Collect can be found in the front of the bulletin. Together let us pray. Almighty God, you have taught us through your Son that love is fulfilling of the law. Grant that we may love you with our whole heart and our neighbours as ourselves. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second collect for today, together. O God, the author of peace and the lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we may trust in your defence and not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Uh, today's scripture reading is uh, taken from the book of James, chapter 1, uh, verses 19 to 27. Our sister singing will be reading for us. James, chapter 1, verse 19. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness that God requires. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forget what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceive his heart, this person's religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, we'd like to uh, welcome uh, Canon Yi ching uh, and wife here together with us. Uh, uh, Canon Yi is the Director of Missions and the Dean of Thailand. Our two missionaries, Jerry and Yahui, are under his care. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, Dean Yi for uh, bringing us the message today. Let us stand also for the uh, Gospel reading. The gospel reading is taken from the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 5, verses uh, 21 to 26. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, reading from verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to hell or fire. So if you are offering your gifts at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to the court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put to prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid your last penny. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Good evening to all of you, uh, those who are gathering on site as well as those who are gathering online. Um, <clears throat> Pastor John is on leave for the next two weekends and very happy to stand in uh, for him and worship together with you and serving together with you. You've been listening to a series of sermons on the Ten Commandments. Today we are looking at the Sixth Commandment, You Shall Not Murder. But the first question I want to ask you, is why did God give the commandments? Why did God give the commandments? The answer from the social perspective may be, well, for law and order, for orderly society. You must remember that there were at least 2 million people of Israel who came out of Egypt, at least 2 million. That's equivalent to the Singapore population in the early 70s, when you have 2 million people on the move. How to live harmoniously Surely you need laws and orders and enforcement of law as well, isn't it? But there is a more important answer to why the law, the commandments, were, de de were given. And this is the divine dimension. This world is God's world. And it is His creation. And His creation came out of His heart, were created out of His heart, he reflects his character and man reflect his image. Okay? And what is the primary character of God reflected out of his creation? What is the primary character of God? So if you meet God, when you meet God, what is the first thing that strikes you? Is it love? The seraphim that is before the throne of God, what do they think about? Holy, holy, holy. And what was is Isaiah's response the moment he saw the vision of God? He fell down on the ground, away from me. I'm a sinful man. Why? Because he beheld the glory and the holiness of God. The post-Christian society <clears throat> in the West thinks that love is the primary character of God. So love justifies everything. God is love. But love is not God. 
So don't make love into the new God. That's idolatry. Love must be qualified with the adjective holy. Holy love. So this Ten Commandments that was given to us was expounded further in the book of Exodus, Numbers, Leviticus and Deuteronomy. And one of the key verses we remember is Leviticus 19.2. Leviticus 19.2 says that, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. And I, the Lord your God, is holy. And this constant refrain, the refrain comes after and uh, before and after this verse, uh, when this uh, whole commandment is expounded, you see this repeated over and over again, particularly in the book of Leviticus. For example, every one of you shall revere his mother and his father. Which commandment is this? The fifth, right? And you shall keep the Sabbath. Which commandment? Fourth. I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols and make yourself any gods of cast metal. What is that? Commandment number three. I am the Lord your God. Again, again, you hear this. I am the Lord your God. That's the reason why the commandments are given. You shall not murder. I am the Lord your God. You shall be holy for I am holy. To summarize this introduction, the commandments are given because God is holy. The world and His creation were created holy. Therefore, you shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, is holy. Now, as we reflect on the sixth commandment, you shall not murder, it is about the holiness of God and the sanctity of His creation. So the first response we will have is to guard our hearts. To guard our hearts. Genesis chapter 4 recorded the first murder in the Bible. You remember that incident? And the Lord said to Cain, who murdered his brother Abel. And the Lord said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And now you are cursed from the ground which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Now this incident happened way before the Ten Commandments was given. Way, way before. What was wrong with murder since there was no law? Right? What's wrong with Piracy, if there's no law against piracy, you can copy somebody's work, sell it for your own keep. You see, sin is not just about a violation of the law. It is a violation of God who created the world and us. There was a violation of God's precious creation in this murder that even creation, the blood of the innocent, cried out against the defilement of the land. And the same reason was given by God about murder after the law was given. That was before the law was given. Now, after the law was given, for example, in Numbers chapter 35, if anyone kills a person, the murderer shall be put to death on the evidence of witnesses. And no person should be put to death on the testimony of one witness. Moreover, you shall accept no ransom for the life of a murderer who is guilty of death shall be put to death. Meaning... Somebody has killed somebody, you cannot pay money to get him out of it. Verse 33, you shall not pollute the land in which you live. That's the reason. For blood pollutes the land and no atonement can be made for the land for the blood that is shed in it except by the blood of one who shed it. You shall not defile the land in which you live in the midst of which I dwell for I, the Lord, dwell in the midst of the people of Israel. 
The land was holy when it was created. You cannot defile it by the innocent blood. So murder pollutes the land and there's no atonement for the pollution until the murderer's blood is poured out to satisfy injustice. Otherwise, the justice of the just character of God inbuilt in creation is still not satisfied. Human being, we are created in the image of God. We have a conscience. To murder somebody feels wrong. But we have taken it to various directions. So some philosophy, some ideology take killing so seriously, they say, don't wear shoes when you go about, just in case you step on an ant and kill an ant. Mosquito bite you, blow it, don't hit. You hit, you are killing. And some people see eating meat as killing, so they go for a plant-based diet. But on the other hand, there are those who downplay the seriousness of murder, abolish capital punishment. Abortion is not murder because until the child is fully formed in the womb, it's not life yet. So taking an innocent, voiceless lump of flesh from your womb is not murder. Jesus took us back to the heart of God in the Sermon of the Mount. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21. You have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder. Whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I, Jesus said, I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council who says, you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. You see, we are too fixated with the act of killing itself. But Jesus drilled down to the heart condition leading to the murder. We all know that God looks at the heart, not the outward appearance, not the outward action. Look at how Apostles John evaluated the murder of Cain, the murder of Abel by Cain. Yeah? First John chapter 3, verse 12. We should not be like Cain, who was of the evil one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his own deeds were evil and his brother's righteous. Notice the emphasis was not what he did, but why he did it. It's a matter of the heart. Cain murdered his brother because he was jealous, because his brother did better than him, because he was too proud to accept that he did not put his heart to the sacrifice. His brother brought the best, but he carelessly brought to God anything convenient to his hand, near his hand. If you were Cain, what would your response be if God esteemed your brother's service more than yours? The holy response would have been to rejoice with Abel, examine himself and do better next time. That would be the holy response. What is your response if your boss choose to work closely with a more junior colleague than you? Since you can't scold your boss, otherwise you may lose your job. You then harbor jealousy, resentment in your heart, slander your younger colleague, scratch his car, puncture his car, break hydraulic system to stage an accident. This has happened before, okay? Last week, another beautiful Korean actress died, apparently from suicide. And if this is confirmed, the police report will state 
she took her own life. But who was the murderer actually? Was it herself? If it was sexual harassment, harassment that he, she suffered, a scar she bought in secret, too ashamed to tell anyone, then those who abused her were the murderers. Was it the vicious commands made by netizens that stabbed and mashed her heart to nothing? Then those who commented irresponsibly on social media had a hand in her death? Or was it the unreasonable work demand, enslaving contractual terms that has robbed life out of her? Then those lovers of money who use her as a tool for their wealth were the murderers. You see, the law looks at who pulled the trigger, who plunged the knife. But the secret deeds of the heart would not escape God's knowledge. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Don't be like the self-righteous religious authority in Jesus' days. Just because they did not pick up the knife to kill someone, just because they did not flog and nail Jesus on the cross, they were not guiltless. Guard your heart. Don't let Cain be your father. Secondly, plead on his mercy. Plead on his mercy. As serious as God takes murder, as deeply as God sees man's heart and the propensity towards murder, there is a trembling of God's mercy to receive us. You know, God could have taken Cain's life immediately, right? But he did not. Instead, God banished him away from the land of Eden. And God even put a mark on his head that he would not be murdered by someone else as he lived as a nomad far away from the presence of God. That was mercy. That was mercy. After giving the Ten Commandments in Exodus chapter 20, chapter 21 expounded further on thou shalt not kill. 21 verse 12. Whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. But if he did not lie in wait for him, but God let him fall into his hand, then I will appoint for you a place to which he may flee. But if a man willfully attacks another to kill him by cunning, you shall take him from the altar that he may die. Notice there is a distinction made here between premeditated murder and a murder that happened at the spur of the moment. Premeditated murder is when one nurses a hatred in his willful heart and makes secret plans to get even. His life will be taken away from this world. But a killer who committed a crime on the spur of the moment, whether it was a crime of passion, an issue of anger management or an intentional action that lead to someone's death. God appointed a place for them to flee. What is that place? Later on in Numbers 35, these places were called cities of refuge. Cities of refuge. Numbers 35 verse 9. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the people of Israel. Say to them, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, you shall select cities to be cities of refuge for you. And the manslayer who kills any person without intent may flee there. The city shall be for you a refuge for the avenger, from the avenger, and the manslayer may not die until he stands before the congregation for judgment. Verse 13, The cities that you give shall be your six cities of refuge. You shall give three cities beyond the Jordan, 
three cities in the land of Canaan to be cities of refuge. And these six cities shall be for refuge for people of Israel, for the strangers, for the sojourners among you, that anyone who kills any person without intent may flee there. City of refuge were provision from the crocodiles of God's heart of mercy. A murderer may run there and be protected before he brought his case before the congregation or the elders of the city. And then the elders of the city have the duty to hear the plea from both the offender and the offended. And hearing the testimony not by one person, two or three persons. And the intent of the hearing is to discern the matter of the heart, whether it was premeditated or if it's premeditated, the offender will be delivered to the offended. If it's not premeditated, to be protected by the city of refuge. City of Refuge were the place where justice and mercy settles its tension so that there would not be spiral of revenge, cycle of revenge in the land. And not only that, when jo Joshua finally led the people of Israel into the uh, land of Canaan, the six cities were named. And you look at this map, the six cities were spaced out, one on the left of Jordan, one on the right of Jordan, spaced out in such a way that anybody who committed a murder in any part of Israel could get to the nearest city within a day's journey. Why? This is God's provision of mercy. Provision of mercy must also be readily accessible. Provision of mercy with loops, layers of loops to jump through would not be mercy, isn't it? It's so hard. This cities of refuge points us to the mercy of Jesus. All of us could run to him easily. All of us could call upon him readily. No matter what wrong you have done, intentional or unintentional, grievous or casual, open or secret, Jesus says to you, I am more than your city of refuge. I have paid your punishment by shedding my holy blood on that cross even before your confession. So you no longer need to fear the punishment. It is paid for already. You no longer need to bear the guilt. The drop box is open 24-7. Come in. So you may be ignorant in the past that there was a refuge prepared for you, but today, as you know, that Jesus is that place of refuge. Don't let pride prevent you from coming to accept his solution for you. Come to him. The city of refuge, the gate is open. Your sin has been paid for. You need not hide the pain any longer. You do not, do not run in fear any longer. His arm of mercy is open. And the Bible says, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Plead on his mercy. Finally, love so that you can, you may overcome. The Christian faith is not passive, but active. The Christian faith does not stop at do not do to others what you do not want others to do to you. You heard of that? Do not do to others what you do not want others to do to you. But Jesus says, 
do to others what you want others do to you. It's active. The Christian faith does not stop at not committing what is sinful, but goes on to activate what is holy. So if you know that murder is wrong, including the heart condition that leads to murder, anger, jealousy, and so on, then what is the positive, the holy that we activate? To answer this question, we turn back to Apostle John. The same chapter, 1 John chapter 3, in verse 12, when John talk about the murder of Cain, say, see what he say in verse 14. We know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Anyone, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. And then verse 16, by this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, that we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. From these verses, what is sinful we no longer do that leads to death? Murder, right? We no longer want to murder. But what is the holy that we should do that leads to life? Love, isn't it? If we just be satisfied to remain a passive Christian, happy that Jesus saved your, your sin, you will always wrestle with your sin. You will always wrestle. If you study just to pass, you may just fail. Christianity is not a passive faith. The light shines. The salt influences. If you are merely contented that Jesus died and paid for your sin, you escape due punishment, you will always wrestle with sin. You are just hiding your light under the bush and isolating the salt in a jar. Love shines. Love influences. Love activates what is holy in the world. You have to do that positive, that active, so that the passive will not gain grounds in your heart. So what is that positive, the love? How do we love? The way Jesus loved. So for Verse 16, it says that we know love that he laid down his life for us. Jesus laid down his life. We ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. And John went on to give some practical tips. Verse 17, if anyone has the world's goods and see his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God love abide in him? Little children, let's not love in word or talk but in deed and in truth. Similarly, the book of James, we heard the last verse, what is a pure religion? Isn't it to care for those who are underprivileged in needs, the orphans, the fatherless, the widows? When God teaches us to give, it's not merely teaching us to share, to invest in the kingdom. He is teaching us to love. And as we love, we cultivate a new spirit. We nourish our new heart. And you deliver us further and further away from the murderous heart. When you choose to love, you get more and more difficult to get angry. Okay? But you're just happy that you're safe. You always wrestle with anger, if you have anger problem. This world is God's world. God has created this world not merely a world with no unkindness, 
but He has filled this world with kindness and love. Who will activate this in this world today? It is you and me who are forgiven by the Spirit of God who dwells in us. So, let's guard our hearts, plead on His mercy, love that we may overcome. We close our eyes for a moment. Spirit of truth that leads us into all truth, that empower us to the life of Christ in us. Lord, we raise ourselves up as a sacrifice on the altar. Shine in us, shine through us, O God. Thank you that you have prepared a path of mercy. You have opened your arms of love to welcome us. And today we run into your arms, O God. So any one of us in our midst, whether on site or online, you have felt guilty of coming before God. You felt fearful whether you could ever say sorry enough. Jesus says the city of refuge is not only open, the punishment has been paid for. No more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Come, run, run to his arm of mercy. He's there to receive you, to cover you, to protect you from the accuser of the brethren. Come. Thank you, Lord. Lord, empower us also to love, to look around us. Who are we neighbors to? Thank you, Lord, that this world will be the world that you have created, redeemed to be, O oh God. Use us, O oh Lord, as we offer ourselves to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us stand uh, to recite the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for a time of intercession. Intercession for today, uh, we will be praying for the deanery of Thailand. Details can be found on the inside uh, of the bulletin. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, Father, you are, you are Lord God Almighty. You are creator of heaven and earth. Father, your resources are boundless, O Lord. For Father, truly you are the creator of all things. Lord, we pray currently for uh, the deanery of Nepal. Lord, we pray for the clergy and the team, uh, even as they plan. Uh, for the relief effort to help the members and the community who are suffering in, in Nepal. 
75% of the members have lost their income as a result of the lockdown. Oh. Lord, have mercy, O oh Father. Provide where you can provide, O oh Lord, in the only in the way you can. Father, we look to you in this season. Uh, and Lord, we ask, Father, uh, for your provision. Naturally and supernaturally, O oh Lord, provide for your sheep, O oh Lord. Lord, as the... Uh, the servant looks to the master, and as the maid servant looks to her mistress, Father, we look to you, Lord, for help, O oh Lord, in this time. Lord, we pray for the Holy Spirit to inspire uh, the clergy and the pastors as they continue to care for the members in the church in Nepal. Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that they'll be able to provide spiritual food through online teachings and services. Inspire them, O oh Lord, inspire them to know how to care for their sheep in this unprecedented time. Father, we pray for the faith of the people uh, to arise and be strengthened in this difficult time, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for your protection over the church in Nepal. Father, we pray for the situation, uh, the COVID-19 situation in Nepal. Father, Lord, we pray, Lord, Protect and keep, Lord, uh, the people of Nepal. Have mercy upon them, O oh Lord. Open their eyes to see, Lord, that you are the creator God, and yet you care for them, O oh Father, even in this midst of difficulty, O oh Lord. Father, we pray and ask, Lord, have mercy, truly have mercy upon uh, this country. Father, at this time, we pray for the political system, pray for the ministries, uh, that are in place, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray, Father, even as there's political instability in this country, Father, I pray, Lord, that you grant mercy, you grant wisdom also to, upon the political leaders uh, to know what to do, uh, to do the right thing, O oh Lord, during this time of um, unprecedented suffering, O oh Lord. Father, we pray for this country, Nepal. May they all one day come to worship you, Lord, as Lord and Saviour. Lord, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, at this time, uh, uh, let us rise uh, for the offertory song. Let us return uh, to God uh, His tithe and bring to Him our offerings. Touch my heart like you do, and I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you, there is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long. There is none like you. Your mercy. Your mercy flows like a river wide. And healing comes from your hands Suffering children are safe in your arms There is none like you There is none like you 
No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. Your mercy is like a river. Eternity long and find and there is none like you. Sing, there's none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. I could search. And I could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. the 10th of October. The, you can sign up on the link uh, in the bulletin. Uh, we're also looking for volunteers. Uh, you can look for Pastor Shirlene or Miss Chloe Ong. Uh, details are on the bulletin. Uh, church prayer meeting uh, this Friday, 25th September, 7.45. Uh, let's, let's come together uh, to take this time to pray uh, for Reverend John also and to also pray for, for each other and for the needs of the world. Uh, Sisters Fellowship on the 7th of November. Uh, timing is written. Uh, do save the date and the topic. Uh, the, the sisters will be exploring a topic on uh, taking our first step in caring for one another. So sisters in our midst, uh, do, do uh, consider. Yes, and do, uh, do take note, there's a sanctuary roof repair uh, from the 14th uh, to the 24th of September. Um, yeah, the details are in the bulletin. Uh, uh, let us rise uh, for the closing song. Close. 
draw me close to you never let me go and lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm your My desire No one else will do Cause nothing else can take your place To feel the warmth of your find a way bring me back to you sing to the Lord you're all I want you're all I want you're all I've ever needed you're Please be seated.